What's up guys, welcome back to the Fab Forms. Got a treat for you today. So I've been working on the Bibster, got some content coming on that, doing some exhaust. Yeah, just lots of content on this thing. I've also been putting uh, Caliente back together. So the last video on that build will be coming very soon. But today, I got a treat for you. And that's this bad boy right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start off and say, hey, this thing is probably not for everybody, but I want you to watch this video anyway, just, just to kind of educate yourself on some of the technology that is available out there, right? You may not ever buy this machine, but I want you to know the kind of technology that Fronius is offering in these kind of machines. And so, you know, you can kind of wrap your head around what the welding industry is going to, some of the technology that they're using and where it's going um, because I have a feeling that this stuff's gonna come down the pipe and may end up in those machines that would be in your garage. So this is Fronius's brand new uh, Pulse MIG machine. Uh, this is the Transteel 4000 Pulse. They also have a 5000 Pulse. This thing is a bad mamma jamma. So the first thing that kind of jumps out at you is it has a separate feed head from the actual welder itself. So the uh, wire spool and stuff is up here in the feed head which is attached to the torch and you know Fronius torches are amazing and then the welder itself is all down under here the only thing that attaches this to this is a power is the power uh, all the feed happens here and then the gas goes straight into this doesn't go into the machine and, which I guess leaves them lots of room for rad technology inside this thing the other thing I noticed when I first got this was the ground strap is a little bit different. It's more of a screw on style ground strap. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I haven't really used it a ton, so can't really speak to whether I like it or not, but it's different. And as always, these things come on amazing carts. Uh, they do a really good job with their carts. Matter of fact, they even make things where you can kind of modify them. So like my trans steel, I've got a dual tank set up come single, this one comes single, you may be able to do a dual tank setup on this one as well. Let's get into what you're watching this video for. So this is the Trans Steel 4000 Pulse. And you would think that it like maybe pulses on and off like a, you know, some guys use pulse to make TIG-like MIGs, MIG welding. That's not what this technology is about. This technology is a very fast pulse. It's an unadjustable pulse, I believe. I haven't found where to adjust it yet. I don't think you'd want to. I think the idea behind this is to control heat. You can get good penetration and not get the part as hot. It's also very good at controlling splatter. Now in just a second, we'll get into some actual welding with this thing and you can kind of hear the difference. Actually, you can definitely hear the difference between regular MIG welding and pulse MIG welding. Um, I kind of equate it to like a two stroke uh, motorcycle to a four stroke motorcycle. For whatever reason, when you pulse this thing, really fast, it almost makes it sound four stroke-ish, kind of brings the, just brings the tone down a little bit, if you will. You'll hear it, you'll know what I'm talking about. So let me tell you right off the bat that this is a three phase machine, um, which I understand that a lot of people don't have access to three phase. But this, for this video, it's more about me kind of showing you the technology that's available. So three phase is usually considered more of an industrial, um, an industrial style power. Some people bring it into their home shops. I actually just did a three-phase converter in this shop, uh, which allows me access to some of this better equipment. I mean, three-phase three phase in your home shop is not really that hard, to be honest with you. The other thing is, I think a lot of this technology will make it into the light industrial stuff. So it'll come out of the three-phase and hopefully maybe into uh, the stuff that you would normally have just with your single phase. So three-phase, 230 or 460, it'll do either or, whatever you know, part of the world you're in or whatever you have in your shop. So this machine will do 2T, 4T. So kind of the same technology you might have in a TIG welder where you press the trigger uh, and hold it, it strikes an arc, you weld, when you let go, it comes off. Or you can press the trigger once and let go, that strikes the arc and then you can weld. And then when you're done, you basically hit the trigger again and it will ramp off. Now this machine will also do uh, pre and post flow gas depending on what you're welding, if you're doing some stainless or something where you need that pre and post flow where it's really important. 
It also has a specialized four position mode where you can actually change the current uh, throughout the weld. So at the end, you can have higher current, lower current, whatever you want. If you want to kind of taper those off or you know, you want to fix those craters at the end of a weld, this machine will do it. Now let's talk about the welding process. In my opinion, Fronius makes uh, some of the easiest interface that you can use. Um, they have what they call synergic mode, which basically does everything for you. You can just pick the thickness of material that you want to weld. You pick the gas, you pick the wire size and wire type, and it fixes or it picks out every other setting for you. You just pull the trigger and weld. Now that's not to say that you can't go into manual mode and change all that stuff. Usually what I like to do is I'll start off in synergic mode, uh, weld with that, and then kind of look at the parameters of what it has chosen for me, and then maybe go in there into manual mode using the same settings and just dial up or down one or two of the settings to kind of fit my needs. I would say 90% of the time synergic is, is perfect though. So you got manual mode, you got synergic, standard MIG welding, and then you have synergic pulse. So it's basically pulse technology uh, with everything already figured out for you based on thickness of material. Now what is cool is you can flip from regular synergic over to pulse synergic, and you can actually see the current values change. So you're getting uh, more amperage on the pulse, but probably if I had to guess about the same amount of heat or maybe even less. So you're getting more pen penetration for the same or less heat in the part. So in manual mode, you can select your current, uh, you can select your wire speed, you can select your arc length correction, uh, your voltage, and your pulse dynamic correction. You can adjust all those parameters, kind of dial it into exactly what you want. And if you get lost, you flip back into synergic and you're ready to go. All the selections are easily made on this thing with just a couple button pushes. Uh, it's very easy and understandable. Basically, it just shows you right on the button, the wire spool, the, and you can kind of click that thing and it'll, it'll cycle through the wire sizes or the wire, or the wire types. This machine also has a gas flow and wire feed button. So if you wanna feed the wire through the cable, say you just put a new spool in it, you don't have to hold the trigger and waste gas or just hold the trigger in general. You just press the button, it kind of feeds that wire through the, through the gun. It'll do the same thing with gas. So if you just want to purge some gas through it, make sure that you have gas all the way to the nozzle, you can just hit the button, it'll purge a little gas through it, and then you're ready to go. All right, so let's get a little bit nerdy on this thing. So some of this stuff is gonna be over some of your heads. It's over my head sometimes. Um, I don't understand all of it. I understand a little bit of it, but it is what makes this machine stand apart from everybody else. So one of the things this thing has is arc force dynamic correction. So it's always correcting the arc force dynamic, which is basically it's correcting the droplet uh, detachment force. So as you're welding, and I don't know if you guys know this, but as you're welding, the wire doesn't actually touch the material. There's like little droplets. Before it touches the material, it melts into a droplet and that droplet kind of detaches from that wire and works into the piece. So you have short circuit welding, you have spray arc welding. Um, they're not done on two separate machines. They're always on the same machine. It's all based on your settings. So a lot of times on thin metals, lower voltages, you're, you're always gonna be a short circuit weld. Um, on your thicker metals, your, your higher amperages, your higher voltages, it's, ten, it's gonna tend to be more of a spray arc weld. Well, this machine, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna be in between those two because in between that two is a section uh, of no-go zone where you're gonna have lots of splatter. So you either wanna be in one or the other. This machine is smart enough to tell you when you're in that zone. So they have a little indicator right here on this thing that basically tells you when you're in that zone. It's called the intermediate arc indicator. And if you have a setting set up and that light's on, you basically know that you don't, you don't wanna weld right there. You either wanna dial it up a little bit or dial it down a little bit. Um, and usually if you do that, that light will go off and you know that you're gonna have basically splatter-free welding or less splatter than you would if you were in that zone, I guess. All right, what else this thing got? It's got uh, five presets, so you can basically preset stuff. If you, if you weld with the same kind of materials often, you can put presets in there. There's no worry, you know, worry about going back and kind of dialing those in or figuring out what you like. You just hit the preset, you're ready to rock and roll. And it also has a lock mode on this thing where you can lock it so if you're welding your buddies can't come along and 
you know, jack with you. All right, so I went right on their website because um, I want to see what, the first question I get from everybody when I do, when I kind of feature one of these welders is the duty cycle. And it says right here, 40% duty cycle, four minutes of continuous welding at maximum output power. In other words, one minute more of productive output compared with the average uh, in this power range. That's what they got here. And then ready to weld in three easy steps, which basically I showed, showed you. And then it says, the other thing I didn't really know too was the advantages to pulse. Now, when I weld with it in pulse, you, it just feels much better. Now, why, I don't know. And what the advantages of that, I don't really know either. So right here on the website, it says pulse welding controlled and fast. The new Transteel 4000 Pulse and Transteel 5000 Pulse mark the arrival of the Pulsed Arc in the Transteel series. Controlled welding in the intermediate arc range. So that range between short circuit and spray arc that I was telling you about that you don't really want to be in, apparently Pulse is going to help you through that range. It's going to help uh, it's basically gonna help you weld where you shouldn't be welding or it's hard to weld, I guess. Together with optimum weldability when working with aluminum uh, are now part of the basic package. So uh, if I had to guess, you could probably put a different liner in this thing and you could probably weld aluminum. I don't know that for sure. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, synchro pulse seam rippling for the aluminum alloy. So yeah, I guess so. The synchro pulse option is recommended for the welding of aluminum alloys when a rippled seam appearance is required. This effect is achieved by modifying the welding power between two operating points. Synchro pulse works in standard synergic and pulse synergic modes, but only on the trans steel 4000 and 5000 pulse. So there you go. This thing also has a stitch weld or a spot weld feature that you can just stick it in there and it'll actually do perfect spot welds or stitch welds. Here, I found another one. Man, the things you find on the website. Arc force dynamic, force influencing the short circuiting dynamic at the instant of droplet transfer. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. And I'm sure it works great. So this is hard, stable arc, neutral arc, or soft, low splatter arc. Pulse correction for correcting the pulse energy of pulsed arc. So slow droplet detachment force, you got a neutral droplet detachment force, and you have a high droplet detachment force. So anyway, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll drop you a link over to their website. You can go check this stuff out for yourself. I'm telling you, man, if you're if you're a welding geek, if you're into this stuff, uh, I suggest you go take a look, man. They they are um, they are really changing the game. They've been changing the game forever. I mean they're making some of the best stuff out there for sure. The Transteel 4000 Pulse, you'll see me using this thing a lot more, especially on some bigger projects that I've got in mind. Um, you know, if you've got three phase in your shop, or if you've got three phase at work, and you got some old machines, and you need to talk your boss man into buying some new stuff, this is what you need right here. Anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more next week. Go do work, son.